part two of the assembly table, everybody. That means we're gonna be installing the electrical system in here. We're gonna be setting up the dust collection system and we're gonna be setting up the internal air compression system. In part one, we cut out the holes for our outlets on one end of the table. What I did not show in the last video was that I cut out two more on the other end of the table. The first thing we're gonna to do today is we're gonna install the electrical. Um, I just wanna go over what materials I have here and where I got some of these things. Um, anything that I did not get in a local big box store, I will put a link in the description so that way you can have access to it if you want it. Um, I am using these low profile outlet boxes. Uh, and the reason why I chose to use these low profile ones is because on my left side of my table, the part that is closest to the table saw, those drawers uh, would interfere with a regular standard size box. Putting this in, the drawers won't have any contact with it. So I decided to just use all of these uh, in, in the entire table. Um, the downside to that is, is less room to work with. So there, it's, it's a little bit harder to maneuver, but they're gonna work out just fine. Um, I got some outlets. Uh, I'm using Romex number 12 wire. Uh, I have here some leftover material. Uh, this is three strand. I don't need three strand, so I'm only going to be using the black and the white wire. The red wire I won't be using. Um, this is perfectly good wire and it will be just fine for what we're doing here. This is the male um, component that you're going to need so that way you can plug uh, an extension cord into this and into your wall to bring electric to the table. So. Uh, basically, this is going to feed the electrical system of the table from the power source in our home. You should know that I am not an electrician, so I don't have any business telling you how to do electrical work, and I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, you'll see me installing everything, but um, as far as uh, how to do it, um, there are people much more qualified than me. Um, if you're going to look into this and research this, it's not difficult to do. At least I don't think it is. But I did an incredible amount of research before I ever got involved in electrical, and it was way before YouTube existed, way before 2005. Um, I took out every single book that was on the shelf in my local library, and I read them all, and I went from there. And it was harder doing it that way. There is a lot of valuable resources on YouTube where you can learn how to do this a lot quicker. Uh, however, be very careful of who you're watching, because there's a lot of people, and I've seen them, on YouTube who don't know what they're doing. They're not being safe. They're not licensed electricians. Um, so make sure the people that you're learning from are good resources. If you are planning on tackling this on your own and you've never done electrical work before, this is probably a good place to start because you are not connected to a grid yet. Um, you can do all your work on this table and never worry about getting electrocuted. Um, if you know somebody who knows electrical work, this is perfect because you can do the work and then have them come over, look everything over and see if you've connected everything in the right way. Um, but definitely this is a great way to practice electrical work.
let me explain what I did. I know for those of you who are not as familiar with electrical, it might seem a little overwhelming, um, but it really isn't as complicated as it looks. So this here is where our power is gonna be coming into. So this is what's gonna bring this whole table to life. Once an extension cord's plugged in here, electric is gonna flow from here into this outlet here, and it's piggybacked. And so from here, from this outlet, it's gonna go towards this end of the table here. And it will end up in this little metal junction box. From that junction box, it heads back into this outlet over here. You probably saw the mess of wires I had going on in here. Um, what we did is we stole power from here. Uh, before it heads back towards the front of the table, we spliced the wires, and so we were able to divert power to this outlet here and this outlet here and also this outlet here. Now this outlet is installed because there's gonna be a compressor in here. So that way you don't have to have any wires hanging around and, and have them visible. So the compressor will get plugged in here. Before we go on to the next part of this build, I wanna make sure that I wired everything correctly. So I'm gonna plug it in. This is the moment of truth. And I'm gonna use this little tester I have here. If both orange lights turn on when I plug it into the outlet, it means it is wired correctly. The electric is done, so now we're gonna start working on setting up the dust collection. I designed this table so that the dust collection port would be at the far end of it, on this side here. We're gonna run this PVC piping through those holes. This is four inch PVC. This is not Schedule 40. Schedule 40 has a thicker wall to it. This is thinner. This is the sewer line type of PVC. It costs about half the price, and um, that's why I'm using it. You could also use flex hose, and I actually almost did that. This is our entry point. This is the part of the table that's closest to the table saw. Originally, I was thinking about putting a blast gate here but then I thought it would be a lot easier to access if the blast gate was on the far end of the table. The access to our dust collection is gonna be set up right around here. I'm gonna set up a little panel and then we're gonna install this blast gate right here. And when it's open, you can use it. And when it's closed, it won't interfere with the dust collection to the other machines. We're gonna start this installation by preparing our entry point. We're gonna make something that will hold this pipe in place. Now, I didn't want to put a blast gate in front there because we're gonna put it near the back of the table, but we wanna do something that resembles a, bla a blast gate so it holds the pipe in place permanently. To do that, we're gonna be making a stencil. We want something that is perfectly circular so that this fits in, but it's a nice tight fit. This is the perfect diameter because this, when it's fixed on here, it is perfect. So what I want to use is this as a stencil to create a pattern that then I can transfer onto a piece of wood and make something that resembles a blast gate without the gate. If that doesn't make any sense, hopefully when you watch this process, it'll start to make more sense. I'm going to start by super gluing this onto here. And I'll let it sit for a little while. Then we'll take this over to the router and we'll be able to use a pattern bit to cut out the inside of this. We are gonna be connecting flex hose to both ends of this PVC pipe. Problem is that the flex hose and the pipe are the exact same diameter, so it's not gonna fit. So there are a couple options. The easy option would be to just buy a coupling uh, that would insert into here 
and it would be a little bit smaller and it would fit. I don't have one of those and I don't want to go out right now and get one. So I am going to remold this PVC piping. It's actually pretty easy to do if you have a heat gun. I got one at Harbor Freight, it was like $15, but if you don't have one and you don't want to be bothered with this, you could just go and buy the part for this and it'll be just fine. It'll actually be easier. I let this dry overnight and it's ready to be installed. Now I just want you to know what I'm doing here, uh, I see this as temporary for myself because I'm gonna be installing a router in here eventually. And when I do, this is right now is gonna go here, but it's gonna be in a way if I put a router in there. So, um, but temporary, but could be a year or two temporary. So for me, I'm gonna install it and then when I need to make changes, I will. I have tried to think of everything I possibly can in advance before I actually started building this. And I know that's probably not possible because once it's built and once I'm using it, I'm probably gonna say, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. Hopefully the changes that I need to make in the future are easy changes, but we have to use it to know for sure. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is an FRL, also known as an air filter regulator lubricator. How it works is this. Your compressor is going to be plugged into this port here. The air will flow into this chamber and it will be filtered here. And it, it's supposed to remove the moisture in the air, which is very bad for your tools. And then it will continue to flow into this chamber. This chamber will have lubricating oil in it and it will lubricate your tools as you're using them. Your tools will be plugged into this port here. And that's just basically all it is. Um, this allows you to control the pressure by pulling it up and turning it, you can control the pressure. Now the package contains the following things. This will get installed here. This will tell you how much pressure you have, okay? And it also comes with these two connectors. Now this is a 3 8 inch unit. They have half inch and they have quarter inch as well. I'll put the link in the description. Um, and it also comes with this Teflon tape to make all your connections. I had to buy these additional fittings so that I can make my connection from this filter here uh, to my compressor. Let me show you how all these pieces tie into each other. This is the fitting that came with the unit. We're going to be attaching this coupling to it. And then this quick connect so you can connect your hose. And this will go right into this side here. Now, the other side, you have this other fitting that came with it. This will go directly into this side here. This is the side that your compressor is going to, is going to be connected to. Then you're going to put this elbow on this fitting. And then, so far this is how it's supposed to look. Then you're going to put this coupling on here. And the reason for this coupling is because we're going to take our, we're going to take a standard hose that we would use for our tools. And I took off the quick connect 
this part goes into the compressor, but now this part is going to get tied in to this. And this will be tied into here. So here is how your compressor gets plugged into this whole thing. That will do it for part two. If you are not subscribed, please do so and hit the bell icon and that will tell you when I post part three. Uh, in part three, we're gonna put the tabletop on, we're gonna build the drawers, we're gonna do a lot of the decorative stuff. Um, if you wanna get a, a peek at what's going on, check out my Instagram page. I will post pictures of the progress before I post the video. Uh, and like always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.